Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Vtutor Studio and today a quick video to share with you how to use our Glitch Transition Pack. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so once you've downloaded the pack, you can just double click on the zip file to unzip it. You will get this folder. In the folder, you have a couple of things. You have the license, the installation instruction, and the DRFX file. Just double click on the DRFX file to start the installation process. It will ask you if you want to install. Right now, I'm already having the pack installed, so I'm offered to overwrite it. So I'm just gonna click that, but just click install. Then once in DaVinci Resolve, you can go over to Effect, Video Transition, Video to Studio, and then you will find the Glitch Transition Pack. Then here, you have 20 different transitions to choose from. You can easily scroll above that transition to get a preview of all it will look like. So that's just a quick way to really figure it out what transition will work for the project that you are working on. Let's start by dragging a first transition here in between all two clips. And as you can see right now, I cannot do anything. It's because my two clips are not trimmed, meaning that we didn't trim the edges of the clip, giving a handle for the transition to be able to be applied. So we're gonna need to just trim here those edges to give it the space for the transition to be applied, stitch them together. And then now we can just take the transition and apply it in between all two clips. Let's play it, perfect. Generally, for those transitions, you want them to be as short as possible because that tend to fit better for glitch style, in my opinion. So anything below one second is generally preferred, in my opinion. If you click the transition, you will see here in the inspector a few parameters that you can control. Here, if I just stretch the transition, you can see that change being reflected in the inspector. So we can see here the duration in a second and the amount of frame. As I say, generally, I will say it's better to be, for example, at half a second or one second. Let's play it. As you can see, in my opinion, it works a bit better that way. Right now, as you can see, when I'm playing them, I'm not getting any drop frame and it's playing pretty smoothly. But if you have an older computer, you can always go to playback, run the cache, and then here, select smart. By default, it could be activated as none. So make sure that it's in smart it will just bring above your transition right here a bar that will turn from red to blue. That means that when it's red, the transition is not caching, and when it's blue, the transition has been caching in the background, meaning that you will get real-time playback in case your computer was struggling to play it. You will see that each transition got different kind of custom tools available in the inspector to modify the look and feel of that transition. Right now, this one, it's very simple. It's just an intensity slider, meaning that if you increase here the intensity of that slider, you will get a shake and an RGB split that is a lot stronger. So you can play around with that to get the effect that you desire. Now let's bring another one and see what we can control on this one. So I'm gonna bring the waiver blocks. And as you can see, we have a lot more things that we can play around with. To see how those different parameters affect the look of the transition, I'm gonna go around half of the transition. And then here we're gonna play with the parameter to see how that's affecting our image. That's just a quick and easy way to modify the transition to get the look that you want. So here we have a strength parameter. It basically increases the opacity of each of those square and basically creating like a bigger split in the image. At any moment, if you want to reset a parameter, you can just double click on it and it will reset it to the default value. Then here we will have the quality of that transition. It's basically degrading the quality of those square and making them softer. Then here we have the resolution and the resolution basically scan down those uh, square and make the image look a bit more blurry and pixelated. Then we also have the block aspect ratio and we have the frequency scale. So you can see already that by moving a bunch of slider, we can get a very different look super fast. Now, very quickly, let's see a few other transitions that I really like. I really love that TV static effect. So here, as you can see, we have that like TV scanning effect. You have, again, a bunch of control over the frequency. You can adjust the number of line. You can adjust the size. There is really a lot you can do with those. Now, another type of tool that you will find in this pack are those ones, for example. Here, you will be able to adjust basically the composite mode, which will allow you to get, again, a very different result. So here, by default, that will be the transition. But now, if I change basically the composite mode, we will get, for example, here from pin light to difference, and we have something that is very, very different already. So you can play around with those different composite mode and basically get the look that suits your project 
best. It's something that I find very useful and I think it gives you a lot of customization over the look feel of your transition. I personally really like to use Color Dodge and Exclusion. That's probably some of my favorite. It just really gave an interesting look in my opinion. One of my favorite transition in the pack is the slow shutter. It basically give a slow shaking shutter effect to the video and I really like this one. On this one, there is a bunch of stuff that you can choose. You can have some motion blur. Here you can choose the quality of that blur so you can increase it. You can adjust the shutter angle and the sample spread. Just be aware that activating the motion blur will be fairly heavy on the computer. So you might need to just let the transition cache uh, before playing it. But as you can see, it just gives a very smooth effect when the quality of the motion blur is very elevated. And that's pretty much it. Hope this video was helpful. You can find a glitch transition pack available on our website. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.